Start small, finish big. 15 Key Lessons to Start and Run Your Own Successful Business by Fred DeLuca with John P. Hayes. Micro Beginnings Many entrepreneurs are able to start small and create large corporations. For instance, Paul Orphalia started Kinko's with just $5,000, and now the chain has more than 10,000 business centers around the world. Mike Illich started a small pizza shop, and after experimenting with many ideas, he turned the shop into the Little Caesars pizza chain. Fred DeLuca started with a $1,000 investment from his partner, and together they began the subway chain with a single sandwich shop in Bridgeport, Connecticut. The global business world offers thousands of examples of entrepreneurs who started with very small amounts of money, $10,000 or less, and sometimes a great deal less. These are micro-businesses, and the people who start them are micro-entrepreneurs. The organizations that loan money to these fledgling businesses, such as DeLuca's own non-profit organization, are micro-lenders. Although these companies may be small, they are very significant to the American economy. The U.S. Small Business Administration says they represent some 60% of all business startups. People from every background are micro-entrepreneurs, including males and females and people of different ethnic groups. Although some of these entrepreneurs have business experience, most don't. They range in age from preteens to older, retired people. They may be high school dropouts or college graduates, but formal education seems to make little difference to entrepreneurial success. Some start their businesses on a part-time basis while they are employed full-time. While some work with partners, often spouses, most work alone. Very often micro-entrepreneurs start in their homes, and while some file for local or state licenses, many don't. In fact, many just ease into the business after they start developing an idea. The Basic Lessons of Entrepreneurial Success To be a micro-entrepreneur, you basically need an idea, a little money and, most critically, the desire to get started. As a startup entrepreneur, follow these 15 principles. 1. Start small, being small is better than not getting your business started in the first place. Even a small business has the opportunity to grow. Also, by starting small, you can learn what to do and what not to do, which will help you in the future. Just because it's small doesn't mean the business can't grow. And while it is small you will have the time to learn the lessons that are essential to your future success. In fact, starting small is an ideal way to start to finish big. 2. Learn to earn. Earning a few pennies as a child is good practice and gets you started learning to earn. For example, DeLuca started collecting soda pop bottles and redeeming them for a few cents when he was seven. This taught him about earning money. He learned that it's not how much you earn at first, it's learning to earn something, even a few pennies. 3. Begin with an idea. Ideas are readily available if you just look around. Look for what needs to be improved or avoid in the marketplace. Ask others for their opinions, too. By looking around you, eventually, you'll find a good idea that can be developed into a business. 4. Think like a visionary, look for the big picture. Don't just stop with the idea itself, look beyond it. Ask yourself, if you implement your idea, then what can happen? Think about what your business can be, what value it can provide to customers, and how it can help you emotionally and financially. Determine why it inspires your commitment. 5. Keep the faith, believe in yourself and your business even when other people have their doubts. Recognize that the challenge of building your business is ongoing. Very often, the future may seem uncertain, especially when your money runs short and you lose customers. You may also be disappointed when vendors don't come through for you or when customers take advantage of you. People may tell you to get a job and forget your crazy idea. But you need to have faith in yourself and keep going. 6. Get ready, fire, aim, if you think too long about what you want to do, you won't do it. You need to plunge in, fire away, and start, as DeLuca did when he opened his first sandwich shop as an inexperienced teenager. Start going in the general direction of where you want to go and make changes as you go along. 7. Make profits or perish. Unfortunately, it's easy to make sales, but not make a profit. DeLuca learned this the hard way the first time his sales topped $1 million. 
he lost $100,000 that year, and he quickly learned that you only make money two ways, increase your sales and decrease your costs. 8. Stay positive, maintain your optimism or you will find that you are pulled down by the school of hard knocks. Armed with a positive attitude, you will keep seeking solutions when one after another doesn't work. Optimism will keep you moving past difficulties that may seem like insurmountable obstacles. 9. Improve all the time, work on continuously improving your business. You can't stand still if you want to continue to attract customers. Keep introducing new products and finding new ways to serve your customers and get your products to the market. 10. Believe in your people, if you don't support the people who work for you, they may get angry and take it out on you or your business. Once, an angry employee poured a gallon of oil down the drain because he felt that DeLuca treated him unfairly. 11. Maintain your cash flow, to avoid running out of money, consider borrowing before you need to so you'll have capital. DeLuca was able to get expansion money from his loyal vendors by paying a little each week on mounting bills. 12. Introduce your product to new customers, every day, take steps to attract new customers. Follow the principle of awareness, trial, and usage. Make people aware of your product, invite them to try it, and turn them into regular users or customers. 13. Be persistent, never give up. You may often feel you want to just walk away from the business. But once you quit, you fail, if you give up, you are out. It's like a game. If you stop playing, you can't play anymore. 14. Build a brand name. Branded products sell better than unbranded ones and people are even willing to pay more for a branded product. You can see that over and over again at the supermarket. 15. Seize the opportunity, you need to grab your opportunity when it comes, since opportunity waits for no one. The following stories of entrepreneurial struggle and success show the power of these 15 principles in action. Submarine Franchise Fred DeLuca was struggling to get enough money to go to college at the University of Bridgeport in Connecticut in 1965, when his friend Pete Buck suggested that he should start a submarine sandwich shop as a way of earning money. Buck said that all they needed to do was rent a small store, build a counter, buy some food and open for business. Then, Buck invested $1,000 in the venture and went into partnership with DeLuca. They started with an early goal of having 32 stores in 10 years and began with a small location that didn't have much traffic. Initially they had to pay more for supplies. But once they were able to get some credit from vendors, they paid them off regularly by Cove airing at least part of the amount due, and gained their trust. Then, though they were still losing money, they opened a second store. Their turning point came when they opened their fifth store in 1968 in a high-traffic location. After eight years, they had only 16 stores, but they decided to start franchising to expand. By 1976, they had 32 stores and by 1982, they were up to 200 stores. They had 8,000 by 1995, and now they have 15,000. Cover up. Jeremy Weiner is another micro-entrepreneur who started small. When he attended Babson College in Wellesley, Massachusetts, in 1995, he noticed that the school didn't have covers for the students' textbooks. He arranged with the administration to provide covers. Then, he went to other area schools and contacted businesses that wanted to market their products or services to students attending local colleges. Once he had both a product and a source of advertising revenue, he created a business plan for a company called CoverIt that grew to more than $1 million in sales by 1999. From pizza to corporate services. Frank Argenbright's story shows how earning a few pennies can set the stage for much bigger earnings later. As a boy, he sold chewing gum to kids at school. Later, at prep school, he sold fireworks to other students. When he went to Italy on a program to study art, he financed the trip by buying a motorbike so he could purchase and deliver pizzas to other students. Though he didn't make a lot of money from these early ventures, the small earnings taught him about the process of making money. Later he used these print sipples to start a polygraph examination service and then he began AHL Services, which became a multinational company that provides contracting and outsourcing for Fortune 500 companies. Hair Today 
the importance of beginning with an idea is illustrated by Tomina Edmuck's story. The Dallas, Texas, inventor came up with an idea for an inside-out ponytail clasp she called the Topsy Tail. Women can use it to fashion their hair in a variety of styles with relative ease, as envisioned by Edmuck. She pursued her idea until it became a commercial success. A clean vision. The concept of thinking like a visionary helped Jim Cavanaugh start a small commercial cleaning company, and turn it into the world's largest cleaning company, Yonah King. He began with a long-term goal or big picture, and then he worked on learning all he could about the carpet cleaning business. He started when he was at the University of Oklahoma. In 1968, he began a friendship with the janitor who cleaned the Holiday Inn, and he began marketing the janitor's services in return for a commission. He felt there was a need for professionalism in the business and developed a franchise program for janitors, starting with a $3,000 loan from a college friend. He advertised the franchises initially in Oklahoma City and expanded from there. Talking his way to the top. Motivational speaker Zig Ziglar exemplifies the principle of persistence. He failed 17 times before he succeeded in the business of being a professional inspirational speaker. He says that the person who put him on the track to success was his company supervisor during the days when he worked as a salesperson for a cookware company. The supervisor, P.C. Merrill, told Ziglar that he had the ability to become the company's national sales champion if he believed in himself. With this inspiration, Ziegler's performance immediately shot up and he soon was set, ting sales and training records. He became the number one salesman nationally. Then, he decided to become a full-time speaker. He accepted invitations to speak as often as he could. At first, he spoke about sales, but then began speaking about personal growth and development. For several years, he came close to bankruptcy, but he persevered, having a positive belief that he would make it. Now he earns $50,000 for each speaking engagement.